Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Camino 2020, a section of my channel dedicated to my preparations for the Camino de Santiago pilgrimage in 2020. If you're interested in those kinds of things, please subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification so you can be advised of future videos. Today I want to talk about a new backpack that I am looking at, and that is the Granite Gear Mass Drop X60. So in the world of backpacking, one of the favored packs is the Granite Gear Crown 2 60. It's evolved over the years. There's been slightly different style changes. But one thing that is interesting about Granite Gear is that they partner with other companies to make specialized versions of the already popular Crown 2. This particular one is the pack that they developed with the company known as Drop, or they used to be known as Mass Drop. So the title of this pack is still the Granite Gear Mass Drop X60. But it is the same basic model, it just comes in a specialized color, which often is the only difference. But this particular one has a couple of features that I think are very interesting that none of the other Crown 2 type models have. This pack in the Crown 2 versions typically runs about 180. It easily competes with packs that go for $200. If you get this pack on drop.com, you can get it for $100. So some of the basics. First of all, this is an expandable pack. Much like the Sierra Designs Flex Capacitor that I reviewed on a different video, this is a pack that changes size depending on what you need. It goes up to about 60 liters, but there's even a way to expand on that if you really need it. But it fits comfortably in about the 40 liter range, making it a perfect size for a Camino pack. You might wonder what is the point of getting something that can expand up to this kind of size if 40 liters is all you need. I think that the main thing with these kinds of packs is that they change and they evolve according to your kit. On different days, you're gonna need different volumes because you're gonna be eating through food, maybe getting rid of water, that sort of thing. There's nothing wrong with having a pack that is going to expand or contract to fit your load perfectly. And the other thing is that because this pack is designed to carry more, it's got a good suspension system that's gonna feel really good, the pack's gonna ride really well, even at smaller volumes. And I think that the biggest plus of this pack is that you're not giving anything up for that expandability. This pack weighs 40 ounces at most, and that puts it in clear competition with even packs listed as ultralight that are as far down as 38 liters, such as the Osprey Exos 38. So if you like the idea of expandability and you want to spend half as much money and gain nothing in weight, this might be the pack for you. Now I did mention that 40 ounces was what it weighed at most. There are a number of modifications available to this pack. The lid comes off, the internal frame comes out. The manufacturer says that you can get this pack down to 23 ounces. That's a pound and a half for a pack that can go over 60 liters if necessary. Let's just talk about the basic structure of the pack. First of all, you've got two compression straps that pull in the center. You also have two on the side. One thing that I love about these compression straps is that they are buckled. The kind of zigzaggy compression straps that you get on other packs don't come apart. And so if you want to stack something like a tent or trekking poles or something in here and use the compression straps to hold them, you have to kind of thread it through all those zigzags and then crank it down. What's nice about this is that all of the compression straps are buckled, so you can just unsnap them, put your equipment in, snap them back, and you're on your way. You've got dual loops for trekking poles, ice axes, whatever. There is a front stuff mesh pocket, which is a feature that I really like on backpacks. However, keep in mind that because of the compressibility options, two of the straps go right over the top of the mesh pocket. It does make it less easy to stuff, and obviously you're not just gonna be able to reach in and grab something, which is kind of the point of these. Again, the good news, these straps unbuckle. I can just pop these off, and now I've got my pocket back. 
it is fairly tight when stuffed. I don't see things falling out of here or anything. On the side, you do have two fairly good sized pockets. This strap is able to thread through the pocket and go behind it so that you can continue to use the pocket for water bottles, tents, poles, whatever, and still keep your compression. All you've got to do is pass this through the hole, and now the strap is behind the webbing. I can still use it as a compression strap, but I have full access to the pocket. Coming around to the back, we see the suspension system. The hip belt is curved so that it just naturally fits. Single strap buckle, side pull on the hip belt, which I favor. The hip belt has two pockets, pretty decent size. I've got a phone that requires about six inch zipper pull to get inside, and as you can see, it has no problem getting in and out of those pockets. Decent padding on both the shoulder straps and the hip belt, sternum strap, no whistle, load lifters, etc. You do get the daisy chain webbing on the shoulder straps, which is fantastic for add-ons. The third daisy chain is actually the sternum strap adjuster point, but you could actually store something else on there if you wanted to. So I guess in total you really have eight. They toss in a couple elastic ties if you want them. These come off. You actually get four total, and these can be moved all over the place. The back of this pack is a foam sheet with ridges and little valleys in between, and it's covered in a very lightweight stretch mesh over the top. This is fairly uniform. This pack is definitely meant to ride right up against your back. This is definitely not your trampoline mesh uh, that you would get with something like the Osprey or the Gregory. The sternum strap has generated some complaints in the community, and I can understand why, because number one, it is very, very tiny. The other problem is that the female end is flush with the shoulder strap. It doesn't give you any pull, and when you push on it, it can slide because of those daisy chains. When all that combines, it can be very difficult to get this to line up right and snap in when the pack is on. There's a special grip you really have to use to hold the female end in place, line up the male end, and get it all to snap in together. All right, moving up. On the lid, we have a nice big top pocket. One of the things that the X60 has that the regular Crown series does not are two small lightweight mesh pockets organizers inside the top lid. On the very top you have four additional attachment points. This lid does remove and one of the features that the X60 adds to the Crown 2 is that those buckles can be used to attach to the hip belt once it's removed from the pack. So you can basically convert this into a large hip belt system just using pieces that you take off of this pack. So if you want a little day pack that fits right on your waist, there you have it. And now these two organizational pockets probably make a bit more sense. If it's riding around like this, I'm gonna be able to get to my stuff and keep it from knocking around all over the place. And because this lid is removable, I've just reduced the weight of the pack. So what do you have left when the lid is gone? Well, this is a roll top enclosure, kind of like you see in Z-Packs and some other brands. Nice double strap holding it together. And then here is my roll top. It is weather resistant, as is the rest of the pack, but it is not waterproof. So don't let the dry bag style fool you. Now, this roll top itself can get quite large. Look at that. This is full size bag here. So I could take these tie downs all the way up to here, add my lid back on. I could expand the pack's carrying capacity quite a bit. But leaving it at a more conservative size, once you get the top off, you've essentially got one big section inside the pack. Not many surprises in here, except that there is no hydration pack pocket, which I actually am happy about because I don't use those. Um, you do have a little clip in case you need to hang a hydration pouch in here. Otherwise, it just stows out of the way where you wouldn't even notice it. The pack does have a hydration reservoir port so that you can get the tube out over to the straps. What is this zipper, you ask? Well. One of the other modifications you can do to the X60 
is pull out the internal frame. If you aren't carrying a lot of weight in the pack, you don't necessarily need this to keep you comfortable or hold the pack's shape, especially if you are good at packing frameless packs. With that removed, the pack gets even lighter. The last thing I want to point out is the hip belt refit system. So what you can do is reach inside here, break out the Velcro, and pull the hip belt out. So what you end up with is a hip belt with the pockets that you can refit to whatever size you need, which is really handy because if you want to bring those pockets around a little further or push them back further, you can do that regardless of what size your actual hips are. And then because the lids connection points are male to female, you can wrap this around the belt and make yourself a fanny pack. Look at that. Let's see how this fits. Oh, very cool. So there's opening. I've got my two organizational pockets. Got my two side pockets right here. This is quite a carry system. So now I have removed the lid. I've removed the hip belt. I've removed the internal frame. I now have a day pack that weighs 23 ounces. Now it's time to see how it fits. All right, I stuffed the pack with two moving blankets and 15 pounds of barbell plates. Straps down. It's good. Now for the infamous sternum strap. Not that big a deal. All right. Pack is on. One thing to note, this one actually fits, which is exciting and makes a lot of difference. So initial impression, this is feeling pretty good. It's feeling really good actually. It just, it just hugs right on to my back. The weight is distributed very well. I feel very little on my shoulders, maybe 10%. So the pockets are right where I'd like them to be, easily within reach. Not a lot of pinch up here. I'll probably adjust the sternum strap a bit more. That feels better. The padding feels pretty good. The weight distribution feels pretty good. I can move pack just is stuck right to me. I mean, it feels like it's a part of me. Really nice. One concern is the back. I am not feeling a lot of opportunity for airflow. So while I appreciate all of the little pits and valleys in the foam back there, I'm not thinking air is really going to get through there. Now, if you're going to be hiking, you're going to be getting wet. Unless you are hiking under just absolute pristine conditions, you're either going to get moisture from rain or moisture from sweat. Getting wet is not so much of an issue as staying wet. However, I do feel like this pack is going to trap that sweat back there. That could be uncomfortable, so that is something I'm going to have to look out for. I will find that out when I take it out on a hike. <laughs> 